So again, it's about a week since I had the Raspberry Pi. I've uh, been doing some pretty cool things with it. It's uh, Once you get used to, to using it, it is pretty handy and, and, and easy to learn. Uh, one of the first things I, I wanted to do and the uh, reason why I really brought this was to use this as a, a streaming media service. So what I'm going to show you today is uh, the XBMZ interface uh, and the AirPlay functionality, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and I'll be using uh, my iPhone uh, 4S as a uh, remote control for this using uh, one of the XBMC remote apps. So let's, uh, let's boot this up and uh, you'll see how the XBMC loads in. It does take a little bit of time to load up, but uh, it is kind of slow. That's my only only downfall with the XBMC. The interface, um, once it gets going, it runs pretty nice, but if you're trying to load one of the add-ons, it's, it's, it's pretty slow to load. Uh, I thought it would be an internet connection issue, but I'm, I'm running a, um, a Verizon 5, I switched to 50 meg down, 30 meg up, so I know my speed is sufficient. I really think it's just the, the software and how it's pulling the add-ons. Uh, I'm not sure how it's working, so if you know and you're familiar with it, just you know, uh, if you want to explain that to me in the comments below, that'd be great. But there we go. So it's uh, booted up, and it's a pretty nice interface. Again, it is a little, a little slow uh, to boot up initially, and it's still, as you can see, it's still going. Uh, one thing I noticed in the code, there is a uh, part of the line that actually defaults the um, processor speed from the normal 700 megahertz to 800 megahertz. So the XBMC software, when you load it. Uh, tells it to overclock the processor, which was uh, surprising to me. Um, again, I'll put the, uh, the links in the descriptions below of where you're actually going to download the XBMC software from and uh, some instructions on it. Again, again, the software um, doesn't really come with a lot of instructions, so just a lot of, a lot of Googling around the XBMC, uh, you'll see how, how it goes. Uh, so you have some pretty nice uh, features here. So it's a nice weather app that goes through. Uh, and again, you know, I'm going to be controlling this with my iPhone uh, using the XBMC remote. Uh, that's really simple to set up. All right, so, you know, see the weather. It does take a little bit of time, again, for it to load up. Um, it's pulling from data underground. Now, you see it says 7.7 .7 degrees. Uh, I'm in coastal Pennsylvania. You see it as there just, just finally uploaded. Uh, so everything there is a little bit of a delay. It's pretty nice, um, but it is a it is a nice interface. And once everything gets loaded, it's it's pretty nice. Okay, let's just click home and go back. So one of the really cool things uh, about the XPMC is the the AirPlay streaming. Uh, you can actually set it up to mimic um, like an Apple TV or or just an AirPlay. Um, first thing you want to do it doesn't automatically start up that way. So you have to go into settings. Go over to, I believe it's services. Yeah, services, and then you'll see AirPlay. So just make sure that this top radial is checked and then you're good to go. Um, you can password protect this so in case you have a bunch of people over, you know, only your phone will be able to stream. So that's pretty handy too. All right, so let's, uh, let's show the streaming capability from the iPhone. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just pull up uh, a YouTube video. So just give me one sec here. Okay. So what you'll see is I'm pulling it up on my iPhone. And what you'll get, in addition to the typical Apple AirPlay, uh, what you'll see is you'll see now the XBMC, Raspberry XBMC listed as an AirPlay streaming device. So if we just click that, you'll see on the screen down here where it says working, uh, that it is beginning to stream. And there you go. So it does stream pretty nice, uh, depending on what you're streaming, how big it is. Uh, it does take a little bit of time to buffer but you should be able to get right into it on most cases. It's, it's pretty quick. Right, so and today's the day. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this right, is right, uh, right, streaming from my last today. video. Uh, sound comes in nice, uh, not too much of a hiccup, and uh, video stream pretty well as well. 
uh, pretty satisfied with that. Um, when you're looking at using this as a true media server, you know, a lot of things you have to do is just go into uh, system and then file manager. Uh, and then here is where you actually load your directions and tell it where to go. Uh, I have a pretty cool wireless router. It's a wireless and it's a, a Netgear. Uh, let me look at the, the model number for you. It's a Netgear WNDR3700. Uh, it, it's a pretty nice router in my opinion. It does uh, dual band. The 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz, um, it's been really reliable. We have a pretty large uh, location where I'm at, um, and we're able to get pretty nice wireless uh, download speeds on all three floors. But what's really cool about that router, it actually has a USB port, so you can hook um, a server to it or even just a hard drive. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is I'm transferring a lot of our movies that were on my, my computer, my wife's computer, and the house computer. Uh, I'm transferring that to the hard drive, and I'll be able to hook that up through the router, and that way just stream it from the XBMC from wherever room we are. And shutting down, is, is it's pretty similar to, to most. Um, now, it really boots up, so you still have all the other options. Like, if we go power button, you'll see. So if you just do exit, it'll bring you back to the command line. You can modify some of the changings in the, in the uh, config.txt if you need to. Or you can just power off the system. This is how you shut it off. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing now. Uh, it boots down pretty quickly. Uh, the one thing I'm concerned about, since it does, by default, overclock the system, I don't know how well it's going to, uh, or how it's going to affect the longevity of, of the processor. Uh, but you know, I guess we'll see over time. Uh, so guys, I hope you liked this video. Uh, I want to try to keep popping these out whenever I do some pretty cool projects. Uh, the next thing I want to do is probably just a, a webcam server. So once I get that loaded, I'll throw that on here, and uh, you know we'll, we'll see how that works. Hey, um, thanks for watching, and um, if you can, please like this video. Um, since I got the uh, the pie, you know, if I'm going to start putting out more and more videos on a pretty regular basis as I learn how to use this thing. So you know, when it comes to this, I'm a newbie, so I'm learning just like you guys. Uh, if you have questions, you know, put them in the comments. If I'm able to answer them, great. Hey, if not, um, you know, I'll try to point you in the right direction. The uh, Raspberry uh, Pi community is a, a pretty pretty strong community. They're um, uh, pretty responsive. You know, I posted a couple things on the forum. They've gotten back to me within a day or so, so it's, it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, again, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Thanks.